Hello guys, welcome back, my name is David and today we are going to troubleshoot simple Cisco network. So what I mean is I have one, com one computer and one router. This router was configured to pass the traffic to translate this traffic into a public IP so the computer can surf the internet. Now what I did, I broke the configuration in several places and we are going to start from beginning until the end, we'll find all the problems and try to fix that. Stay with me. Okay, let's start. This is my computer. This computer is supposed to have the IP address and DNS IP address, right? And the gateway, of course. Then traffic comes here on the Cisco router, and then from the router it goes to the internet. But here, we need to do NAT, right? Network address translations. So let's start and find all the problems I caused in the configuration. So in order for the traffic to leave the computer, computer is supposed to have the IP address. Let's make sure the computer has the IP address. And when we say let's make sure computer has the IP address, let's test the actual status of the IP address, not the configuration. And what I mean by that is you can go into a configuration and make sure the configuration is there by clicking this button. But that's not the way I want you to test it. I want to test it the actual status of the configuration. That means you can either click here, details, or in the CLI. Now, what's the difference you might say? The difference is that sometimes when you configure the IP address, Windows is not taking this IP address for some reason. The, there can be many, many reasons, but the configuration doesn't always work. So when you check the configuration on the IP address, it's not necessarily the computer is using that IP address. So what we want to do, we want to check the actual status of this configuration. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have the IP address here, as you can see, and we have the gateway. So we know the IP address is there, and probably the IP address works. We can ping the IP address itself, and yes, well, IP stack, TCP IP stack works on the computer. That's good. So now let's test the gateway, make sure the gateway works. Here's the gateway, and we want to ping that gateway to make sure the gateway is on the network. Now, you might already see that the gateway is that one on the topology, so the gateway is wrong, but let's try and ping it. Ping 192.168.1.254, and the gateway is not pingable. And how do, let's say we don't know the if the gateway is correct or not, or we know the gateway is correct, but we are not sure why we don't ping it. Ping could, could be closed. Nobody closed uh, ICMP on the gateway, but let's say it's closed. You want to sh make sure the gateway is on the network, and for that we can check the ARP. Uh, let's go ahead on the Windows machine, type ARP hyphen A, and this will show you ARP cache, and you know the IP address mapped to the MAC address. So let's see if we have 254 here in the ARP cache, and we don't have it, but we have that one. And let's try and ping it that one. It's not pingable. That's weird. But well, at least we know it's that one. But let's go ahead and change that one. You know what? We have the Cisco router and we have the interface G3, Gigabit Ethernet 3. And let's see what's the IP address on the interface. Show, run, not show run, show interface G3 address. And as you can see, this is the IP address of the Cisco router. So yes. The computer is supposed to have that one as a gateway, not 254. So let's go ahead and fix that on a computer. We are one step uh, closer to the fixing the problem. And let's do one. Now, remember that one wasn't pingable from the computer. And we want to find out why we cannot ping it. Should it pingable? Should it not? And let's go ahead and check if there's any access list on the Cisco router on the inside interface. Show run inside interface give the Ethernet 3 and pipe in for the inbound. And sure, there is an access list. Uh, let's check what's inside. Okay, we have permit IP 192.168.3. Okay and slash 24. So the access list is not permitting our traffic coming from the computer because remember our IP address, our subnet on the computer is 
192.168.1, not three, but one on the third octet. And access list on the Cisco router is not having this dot one. So let's go ahead and fix that. We need to go into access list, extend it, inside bar, inbound. And you know, we know for sure that they're not there's not supposed to be dot three a network on this LAN, right? So it's okay to remove this IP address and fix that. We're node 20 and then permit IP 192.168.1.0 and any. Okay, now it looks great. Let's see if we can ping the router. Okay, we can ping the router. Great, now let's check, do we have the internet? And no, we don't. Okay, uh, let's see what else we are missing here. Do we have the route? Now actually, let's make sure the Cisco router has the internet. Ping 8.8.8. Cisco router doesn't have the internet. Let's fix that. So what do you need on the router to have the internet? You need the IP address, you need the next hop, which is that one, and you need the connection between ISP and the router. So let's check what is the interface on the Gigabit one, and what is the IP address here? Okay, that's great. Now what's the gateway? Show IP route. And our gateway is that three. But remember, our ISP has that one, not that three. So let's go ahead and fix that too. Here's my route, which I need to remove and add the new one. Now, remember, if you just add the route, you'll have two routes. It's not going to replace, even though it has the same destination, it's not going to replace. So you want to remove the old route and add the new one. Okay, now we have the route in the routing table proper route. Now let's see if we can ping the Google. Ping Google from the Cisco router. Okay, Cisco router has the internet. Now let's come back on the computer and to see if computer also has the internet. Well, no, computer doesn't have the internet. Okay, let's think, what do we need to do? What do we need to have on the Cisco router to allow the internet to access uh, from the computer so the computer can serve the internet sites, websites, okay? So first, the computer has the private IP address, you see? And the Cisco router external interface is the public IP address. So we want to translate our private IP subnet into a public IP address of the router. And for that, we need to do the NAT. And let's make sure we have the NAT translations on the Cisco router. So let's go ahead and try ping. Actually, that's not. Let's ping and come back here and see if we have not translations. And we have some not translations, which is not our Google IP addresses. So let's clear up our IP not translations dynamic, I believe here. No, just just everything. Okay, show IP not translations. We don't have new translations. So that means Cisco router is not translating our traffic from private subnet into public IP. And let's troubleshoot that. We need to have the configuration for that, right? So let's let's go ahead and do this. Show run interface gigabit three. And does it have the NAT configuration on the gigabit three? It does, and it has not IP not inside. That's great. Now, inside interface is supposed to have IP not inside. The outside interface, though, is supposed to have IP not outside. Let's check that. Oh, outside interface doesn't have IP not outside at all. So let's go ahead and configure that IP not outside. And now we fixed NAT, well, at least partially, on the Cisco router. Now we know that the inside interface and outside interface, they both have NAT configuration on them. Let's go ahead and check IP NAT translation again. All right, we have some traffic here. 
This is our IP address. Right? Right. And this is what we are trying to ping. And this is the ICMP protocol. And this is the IP address we are translated into. So if we check this IP address on interface, that's our IP address. We know that Cisco already translates the packet into public IP. Now what we need to do is we know traffic comes here on the router, is translated, and we need to make sure traffic can leave the interface. Now, how do we check that? Well, usually if you have the route and there is no restriction on the interface, traffic leaves the interface. So let's go ahead and check that. Do we have any access list? We don't. But do we want to put the access list to make sure traffic leaves the interface? You know, you can use probably packet capture if you know how to do that. But if not, what you can do is do a quick configuration, show IP access list extended, for example, and match our traffic. In our case, let's say outside ISP is going to be, no, not outside outbound. That's the access list name. And permit our traffic. What is our traffic? IP host 192.168.1.10 into Google DNS. And we want it to be ICMP, but IP will work as well. But let's do ICMP only. And now we want to assign this access list on the public interface. But remember, right now the interface doesn't have the access, which means once you assign this access list, you'll permit only the things you have in the access list. And in our case, that's only ICMP packet coming from our computer going to the Google. But for the rest of the users, we're going to break the internet. Well, if they have already. So what we want to do is to add permit any any at the end of the access list. Which means if we assign this access list on the outbound interface for the outbound traffic, we'll get the match here and hit count will increase if the packet leaves the router. And for the rest of the traffic to not block them, here's the permit IP and the any. So let's go ahead and do in gigabit Ethernet. One IP access group outside outbound and outbound pa packets. So we want to do out. And now, now you see there is a match on IP and EN. Probably some kind of you know uh, different traffic coming from the computer, checking the updates or something like that. But our traffic doesn't have the match. Let's generate the traffic on the computer. This is our traffic. One. Okay, and now let's check if we have the match on the access list. We don't. But that's weird. Isn't our IP address? Oh, oh I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Remember, we translated traffic into public IP. So there's no way to match the 192.168.1.10 on the egress interface. So we want to do something else. Let's go ahead and, you know, fix that. We want to remove line 10 and add the new new line. IP, ICMP, host. What's the our public IP address of the router? It is 100 that 100, I believe. This is the IP address. And then we are going to ping Google DNS. Here's the access list. Now, now we need to renumber this because it's incorrectly. We want to have permit any any at the end. So remove 20, permit any any. And now it's correct. Okay, now let's ping and let's see if packet leaves the router. We still don't have the match on the interface. Okay, here's the match. I was <laughs> like, what's going on? So we have match and that confirms two things. Not two, actually several. We have the working gateway for the Cisco router, so traffic can leave the interface. 
Now, because the match is for the public IP address, we also know that the traffic is being translated. So even if you didn't check the IPNR translation, this confirms that there was a translation and the private IP address is translated into public IP address. And the third, uh, packet leaves the router. Okay, now that's good. It leaves the router, but is it coming back? No, it might be coming back or it, it's might not coming back. Depends on the problems on the internet. So since this is video about the troubleshooting, let's make sure the traffic is coming back. And for that, we again can capture the traffic or we can assign the similar access list on the inbound traffic. Extend it and that would be outside inbound. And now what do we want to match here? We want to match Google DNS as a source because remember, answer is coming from Google now. And we want to do destination is going to be our IP address on the public interface, on the outside interface. And the protocol is ICMP. Also, you can use echo reply if you want. Not necessary for this purpose, but you can. Because uh, like, if you are troubleshooting with someone else on the other side and they are pinging your IP address as well, you might want to add echo reply to make sure this is your reply, not their ping. But Google is not going to ping us. So it's okay to not put the echo reply. Any, any ICMP we match here, we know it's our reply from Google DNS. And now let's permit any any because we don't want to block any other traffic on the interface. Because right now there is no access list again. There is no access list. And if we assign the access list, we'll block everything that is not permitted on the access list. So let's go ahead and uh, configure the Ethernet Gigabyte Gigabit Ethernet 1 IP access list, not access, access group. And here we use inbound. Okay, in. Now, let's check what match do we have on the interface for inbound traffic. Is there any reply from Google? And there is a reply. So we know now that the traffic not only leaves the router, but it's also coming back from Google. So internet in between Google DNS and our ISP is okay. We receive the traffic, but computers still cannot ping that. How come? We need the ping on the computer. So what else are left? When traffic comes back to the router, let me try to draw it here. When traffic leaves, okay, we, we have this traffic, it left the router, uh, went to the ISP, not ISP, Google DNS, and coming back, and it comes here, we have this match on this interface. Now, what's supposed to happen? Well, NAT will catch the traffic, will check the port translations, and will figure out, okay, that's the returning traffic for this ping, the guy is pinging from the Windows 7 machine. And now this packet, sorry, now this packet is supposed to leave this interface, okay, to, to be delivered to the computer. And let's make sure that is happening. For that, what we are going to do is, we are, for that, we are going to check if the traffic leaves the Cisco router. Again, this is the same as we did on the outside interface, you can capture traffic if you know how to capture. If not, you can assign the interface on the address. Let's first make sure there is no access list on the router. And let's do out. There is an access list. Okay. Now let's check what this access list has in it. Does it have any match? And it doesn't, but look at this. The subnet is not what we are expecting to have. Because remember, our subnet is 192.168.1.10. And here we see two. So again, the subnet on the axis is wrong. Let's try and fix that.
Now it's correct. So remember, the traffic leaves the router. So the source here is going to be any, in our case, it's Google DNS, and destination is our computer. So the access list order, like from any to subnet, is correct. And let's see if we can finally ping it. We still cannot ping it. Wow. <laughs> let's see what's going on. Is it leaving the interface? It is actually... It's my bad. I did two again. <laughs> okay, this is wrong. Uh, this is what happens when you rush. And... Actually 10. And... Then we need to do one. Uh, yeah, once you remove the all lines from the axis, that axis doesn't work anymore. So there's no deny any any at the end if there's no any line in the axis. So as soon as we removed 10, we start pinging. And, and then we added correct line here and we can still ping it. And we have hit counts. So this is how you troubleshoot the simple basic Cisco network. Not only Cisco network, pretty much any network. You need to know what you're troubleshooting. You need to know how traffic goes, what gateway you're supposed to have on the computer. You need to know all the things to troubleshoot. And at, after some several months or years, you have the enough experience to skip some of the steps. For example, you might know the gateway on the router is correct because you connected to the router remotely and from the internet. So the router most likely has the default gateway. Or you might know that the, the access is not supposed to be checked on the inside interface because user told you that, that they can ping the IP address of the gateway. So many, many things can be skipped based on your experience, but this is from starting to the end. You check from the beginning where you have the problem. You don't check at the end if the Cisco has the internet. First, you make sure you have everything you need to leave the uh, area, to leave the sub. Now let's see if you can ping Google the Google uh, website directly using DNS, and we can ping. So if I go on the browser here, and I'll try to open the Google website. I should be able to open it, and sure enough, I can open it, and it works. Perfect. I hope this was useful for you guys, and at some point you'll use it. That's it. So guys, if you like this video, please uh, like the video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Also, I'm looking for an idea as what kind of videos to create. So if you have any idea and you're looking for some kind of configuration on the Cisco or a similar network, you can put in the comments what do we want to see in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.